Not here. The Hatter made the rules of reality. Not David. Or the cat. Or... Even... Her. But... She... Is not of direct importance. Before you can begin to understand her, you must know young David's story. It is imperative. The Hatter exchanged glances with the cat, and the cat nodded, disappearing without another word into a purple fog. The Hatter approached David and extended a long, ragdoll-like arm out to the boy. If you will kindly follow me, sire, I will show you all of your kingdom. David was still unsure of the beings. They seemed impossible, unreal, imaginary. They defied the laws of basic reality with such ease that it was all too close to terrifying for David. Almost everything in his body was screaming at him to say no, to slap away the long arm and the hand attached to it, to tell off the foul monster and run for safety, but... <laughs> you know what they say. Curiosity killed the cat. <laughs> he found himself hesitantly taking the Hatter's hand, and as he did, a wave of fog seemed to move over David's mind. A sudden surge of energy shot through David. Energy that was making him sleepy. Very sleepy. And fast. Soon David's world fell into darkness, spinning, spinning, and then a new feeling. It was a strange feeling, one that David was not at all accustomed to. For lack of better words of description, it felt to David like... falling in reverse. Floating upwards. However, rather than feel the world falling away beneath him, David felt the world around him sinking into darkness under his feet as he ascended higher and higher into the unknown. Soon, David felt something brush his ankle, then his arm, then his face. They were everywhere, but what were they? It was only when one came directly into David's field of limited view that he was able to properly identify what directly had been touching him. As soon as he did, however, he recoiled in horror at the startling revelation that what had been poking and prodding at his skin had in fact been tiny, gray-colored hands. They were all small hands, ashy and gray, and all reaching right for David. David began fighting away the grasping hands, but in the process was grabbed by the ankle. Another soon followed, and the hands were now holding David in place, halting his ascent. He was terrified as he slowly felt the hands dragging him back down. 
Desperately fighting for his freedom, eventually David kicked his leg free and quickly used his advantage to free his other leg. Succeeding, David once again began to float upwards. He was relieved. He didn't know what awaited him at the end of his ascent, but he figured it had to be better than the grabbing hands below. After what seemed to be a couple more minutes, a faint light began to show above David's head. It grew in diameter until David could clearly make out what appeared to be his own home. The opening's appearance became closer to see as David floated right for it. It looked almost watery, like the surface of a pond just after a wind gust so delicately disturbs its otherwise peaceful face. As he rapidly approached the opening, eagerly looking forward to return to normalcy, he heard a faint voice shouting from below. As it faded away, he could hear it. It sounded raspy, menacing, and, if only a little, familiar. You damn fools! How did he get away? Boomed the Hatter. The three currently terrified servants shakily responded with quiet, I, I don't knows, and please forgive us. Listen. Number one, don't piss off the hatter, said the cat. So, whatever shall we do with them, sire? Pull their eyes out and use their tendons as a jump rope? Stretch them out like a roll of taffy, and then flatten them to be used as a rug. Ooh, I know what to do with them. Sire, please, we beg mercy of you. The Hatter leaned in close to the terrified servant and said quietly, My new plaything got away. <laughs> it is your dunder head fault, and you would dare. <laughs> you really are funny! But... The thought of you living past the next three hours... <laughs> of me and the council of none, I hereby banish all of you to the Red Wastelands. May the wild pups out there serve you good company. Oh, oh, but wait, there's more! As sole ruler of Wonderland, I order you and your families to the Wastelands. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? The servants gasped in terror at the mad ruler's display of brutal power. Indeed, sire. Twas a most delicious twist of fate. For the poor bastards. No! You cannot do that, you monster! This is too far! You leave them out of this madness! Screamed the servant, overcome with a sense of fatherly protection. 
Oh, he was brave. Dumb, but brave nonetheless. The Hatter stood tall to tower over the now cowering servant. You know, standing up to me, shall we say is a gamble in order to gamble. You must have cards. Cards have four shapes. Spades, hearts, diamonds, and gloves. Now then, behind each of these. Just then, four life-size playing cards of each shape stood before the servant. Lies an answer to the offer I am about to make to you, pitiful beings. And this will be your only offer. If you can answer me one good reason as to why I should not kill you and make your filthy families watch, that is it. Behind the card, I have predicted you will be. Then you and your families may go free, and I will forget that this day ever happened. So, care to take a gamble? <laughs> The servant pondered the twisted ultimatum, and then asked, What should happen to us? Should we choose incorrectly? <laughs> well... Then, you would be subject to whatever punishment I see fit to punish a bad gambler! That's for your family. I'll keep them as slaves, for a time. Then I will allow them to go free for a few years. Maybe disappear and give them the illusion that I never existed at all. Then, just as they think that their lives have returned to normal, I will return in all my horrid glory and cut the kitties while Mummy Dearest watches. Then I'll take her and stuff her, make her into a marionette, and put her into a museum of other poor like-minded souls. Maybe I'll hold a theater show and let everyone see them. And when they gather, I will light the theater on fire and kill them all. Isn't that fun? <laughs> a million thoughts ran through the servant's head, but unfortunately... Old service boy forgot that being nice and doing the right thing in the face of certain death is... Suicide. Spades, he uttered. The Hatter broke into a celebratory dance at the poor servant's selection, and as he did, he then scooted to the edge of his throne and awaited the second answer he requested. The only things that could fall from the servant's mouth. Be because it's... It's... It's madness! It is so sad. It's really too bad. He revealed the card, which had in big, huge lettering the words, Because it's madness, sprawled across it. You should know by now that down here we're all mad. And with a snap of his fingers and a beam of his eye, the poor servant transformed into a life-sized Ace of Spades playing card. However, the most horrifying part, he was still alive. Barely so, but the servant was still able to see and hear everything around him. 
even to go as far as to retain information. Beyond that, he could not move, as his stump legs and hands could not support his balance enough to provide movement. The only way he stood now was through whatever twisted magic the Hatter was imbued with. The other servants, now terrified, began to attempt to run. One did not get far before the disembodied head of the cat appeared in his path and sank his razor-sharp teeth into his eyes and brain, the fangs piercing his skull like a butter knife. The door was mere inches from the last servant's grasping hands when the Hatter reached out his hand and simply said one word. RETURN! Instantly, the servant was flying through the air in reverse in a vacuum-like effect toward the twisted abomination. The Hatter snatched him by the throat and looked him in the eyes. Naughty. Dirty. Little man. Running away without your companion? Now I just cannot figure out why you would want to do such a thing. After all, He's a god! <laughs> Sire, please! I beg you! It will never happen! Oh, would you shut up! Boomed the Hatter as he took his hand, formed it into a curved blade, and shoved it through the stomach of the servant, silencing him immediately. The Hatter tossed the lifeless corpse to the ground, blood pooling around underneath it. Oh, great good god, rabbit! Yelled the Hatter. No more than two seconds later did a white rabbit in a red waistcoat appear before him. Yes, sire. Reporting for... Yada, yada, yes, I know. Now listen. Firstly, I want you to clean up the trash that's currently creating a pool of mess on my throne room floor. And then... I want you to find out how he was able to escape me. I'm sending you to him. Observe him and lure him back to me. I don't think I need to tell you what will happen if you fail me, Rabbit. Do I? He stated, gesturing to the paralyzed figure which was once a man. The Rabbit was no fool. He would not even dare disagree with the Hatter, for he knew all too well the terrible powers he possessed, and just how easily he could be spurned into displaying them on anybody and everybody that he pleased. So off went the White Rabbit, through the large ornate door, and into what the mortals called reality. Oh, reality, thought the Rabbit. This silly concept mortals use to explain away things that would otherwise be frightening. Do they not know that all the greatest things in the cosmos are found outside the realm of mundane comfort? Do they really believe that just because they don't believe in something, that it means it just does not exist? This silly mud ball is so full of potential, if only its people would apply themselves. Now then, where are you, David? The rabbit scoped out the area where he had arrived in, and after a few minutes of diligent scanning, there he was. Standing in the middle of a circle of concerned onlookers was the boy, face down and motionless on the snowy ground. As he looked on, the boy began to stir, and as he rose, the group of people around him started to diminish in number until only four remained. Eventually, the boys all seemed to disperse, waving a goodbye to each other before walking home. David walked for a good ten minutes until he reached the small, slightly beaten up home that he had lived in, unaware that something had secretly followed him home. David walked in to the sounds and smells of his mother cooking dinner. She reminded him that dinner would be in twenty minutes and told him to promptly shower and change into clean, non-snow-covered clothes. David did as he was asked and, twenty minutes later, was down the stairs in a clean pair of clothes. Dinner was fantastic! A wonderful roast with delectable mashed potatoes and a side helping of roasted vegetables. There were green beans, corn, asparagus, beets, and... carrots. David paused as the thought of the word came into his mind. Something in the air turned 
sour, and a strange feeling began to wash over him. He remembered the hand that had held him in that space. Gray, ashy hands. Tiny, lifeless hands. Almost as if they belonged to children. David? Called his mother from the other side of the table. David looked up from his food to meet his mother's concerned gaze. David was not focused on her, however. Are you quite all right, darling? Oh, yes, Mother. Oh, he must have dozed off for a minute. He replied. His mother seemed to accept his response, and David went back to his thoughts. Carrots. Carrots are a good snack for rabbits. David thought, as his mind began to wander. David looked slightly left of his mother, to the window in the kitchen that led outside, towards the large field which led to the thick forest which lay on the outskirts of the countryside which dotted the landscapes. The snow covered everything, and although it had grown quite dark outside, David could see the white like a giant neon sign sticking out of the darkness. In that white, his eye caught a flicker of movement from behind one of the snow-covered pines. He could not make out a figure, only a small shadow that moved quickly through the darkness. As it trudged onward, David watched the figure become smaller and smaller as it got closer and closer. And soon, David could see what it was. Though he could not say he fully believed what his eyes presented him with. A rabbit. A white rabbit, wearing a small red waistcoat and holding a small object in its tiny paw. He pressed the object to the window and realized it was a small, multicolored pocket watch. David was stumped as to what to do. So he merely watched the rabbit jump from its perch into the snowy night below. David knew what it wanted. He had no idea why, but a sudden, strong, and demanding thought had made itself present in David's brain. Follow it, screamed his mind. Though further south, a feeling of total opposition also clamored its way through David's body. His gut did not win out over his powerful mind, however, and later that same night, David snuck out from his warm and comfy home and in to the snowy London night. He did not know how he would find the rabbit. He just walked out. Away from civilization, away from any lights, from warm bed, or mother so dear. Away from home, away from safety. And so it was seen, and so he did act, guiding the boy through the dark, closer and closer. The pitch black pine stood as giant stone monoliths to the eerie black sky. Then it was the whisper, so faint on the wind, yet audible to his ear. Follow it, follow it, follow it. The voice of that one which he did not want to trust, but whose voice was so. And yet, he had to know. It simply had to be known to him. The who's and why's of the strange experiences of the past few hours, and th that thing! The Hatter, the Cat, the, the Cheshire one. It didn't make any sense, and thus, he simply had to know. Now, the boy was at the edge of the dense woods, and the dark seemed like a void. The same void that he had faced earlier that same day. He walked into the dark, into the void, to face the unknown of Wonderland. Next month, Chapter 9, Beware, Beware, The Hatter's Ha, 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 ha.